Hi, thank you for joining the toolkit for remote managers and remote direct reports. I'm Sasha Connor, the founder of Virtual Work Insider, a consultancy that teaches organizations and executives how to lead across any distance. So today we're going to be talking about how to have an effective relationship with remote manager or remote direct reports. A couple of areas that we're going to cover are first the four common need areas for remote managers and remote direct reports. Then we're going to talk about how to take a communication audit to help with talking about communication flow and context setting. And then we're also going to talk about asking for help, how to ask for help as remote direct report and how as a manager to make sure that you know when your direct report needs help. So by the end of the session, you should have a tangible list of things to talk about at your next one-on-one -on -one with your manager or your remote direct report. So here are the four common areas of needs for remote managers and remote direct reports. So first is the area around information flow, availability, and context setting. The second is help, how to ask for it and receive it. The third is trust building and personal engagement building. And the fourth is feedback how to give and receive feedback. So in the module today, we're only going to have time to cover these first two areas in depth. And for each of the areas, I'm going to talk about what the manager needs and what the direct report needs. So I'm going to give you a real life example from my life. I'm going to talk about my kids in terms of asking for help. So I have a nine year old and I have a seven year old. And the other night it was shower time. And my nine-year-old daughter went in to, to take her shower. And I was in the bathroom. I was cleaning up, um, walking in and out of the bathroom. And I asked her probably four to five times, everything going okay in there? And every time I asked, she said, yep, everything's fine. So she finished her shower. And when she got out, she started brushing her hair. And she said, mommy, my hair is so tangled. I have so many knots. And I said, did you use conditioner? And she said, no, I didn't. And I said, why not? And she said, I couldn't get it out of the bottle. It was, there wasn't enough left in the bottle and I guess she was trying to shake it out and she couldn't get it out. And I said, why didn't you ask me for help? I asked you several times if you needed help and you said no. And she said, I didn't wanna bother you, right? Big red flag, right? So that, that is an example in real life, right? Where you don't just have a shower curtain between you and another person. You have maybe thousands of miles between the two of you. And somebody might not want to ask for help because they're worried about bothering you. My son, on the other hand, the seven-year-old, got in the shower and he immediately said, Mommy, Mommy, I need your help. Right? So he had, took a different tact and he was very vocal about the help that he needed. So the, this leads me to some of my, my tips for an action plan for asking for help. So for the manager, inviting discussion. So do it in many ways and often. So the example I gave you with my daughter, I asked pretty often if she needed help, but I did it in the same way over and over again. I should have varied the way in which I was asking, meaning I probably should have peeked behind the curtain to see if everything was okay there. So you might want to ask your direct report to actually show you something they're working on midstream so that you can get a sense if everything's going okay. Also, make it safe for them. Show your vulnerability to invite theirs. Talk about a, a project that you might be struggling with so that they could actually share where they might be running into roadblocks or barriers. 